Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast part of your professional development. This is Educational Podcasting Today, episode number 35. Today, we're talking to Dr. Will, the famous podcaster from the Dr. Will Show. Today, we've got a lot of great topics, and I'm so thankful to have him on the show. We're going to be talking a little bit about his podcast, some of his thoughts about teachers and money And he's going to be sharing with us a brand new project he's been working on that I was fortunate enough to be with us. And we're going to be talking about when you guys can get a hold of this brand new educational product. But before we get into our conversation with Dr. Will, I want to remind you guys there's some great things happening in 2019 on TeacherCast. Just opened up a brand new channel helping you guys learn how to bring podcasting into your classroom Please head over to www.podcastingwithstudents.com. Everything that you guys want to know all about creating podcasts with your students, setting up assignments, grading them, creating rubrics. We've got some great app reviews, and we are just getting started. We are looking forward in the next week or so to going down to Florida. We're going to be at the FETC conference. We actually have a fantastic podcasting workshop if you're out there listening and you're going to be down at florida we have a podcasting workshop on sunday from 1 30 to 3 30 i am looking so much forward to being down there and seeing everybody at FETC. if you check us out come on up and meet me i'd love to meet you we're going to be hanging out all over the place but mostly we're going to be spending some time at our friends uh booth over at microsoft education But you never know where we might pop up. You might check us out over at WeVideo. You might check us out over at Podcaster. Lots of different places to check out TeacherCast over at FETC. And, of course, if you're out there as a tech coach, we would love to invite you guys to check out our show, Ask the Tech Coach, drops every single Monday. Nick and I have a great time talking to co-hosts, talking to tech coaches, helping you guys help your teachers. Check out AskTheTechCoach.com today. I want to bring on my guest for the day. He is the host of the Dr. Will Show, a good friend of mine. We've been talking podcasting back and forth for such a long time. You can find all the information out about him over at thedrwillshow.com. I want to bring on my good friend, Dr. Will D'Amport. Dr. Will, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It is so great to have you on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Dr. Will? Well, I am an instructional technologist by day. I do some consulting, some writing for EdTech magazines. Of course, I am a podcaster. Uh, I like steak and movies, and I'm just trying to live my best life. You like steak and movies. What kind of steak do you like? What kind of movies do you like to listen to? Prime Rib. Prime Rib. And And the movie, movie of choice? Man, I love superhero movies and, uh, you know, my favorite movie of all time uh, is A Brown Sugar, uh, which is a romantic, you know, comedy, but it's got a lot of coolness to it. Uh, and of course, you know, Black Panther. And I just, I saw Spider-Man, right? That was great. Uh, the Spider-Man trailer is is fantastic. I watched it a couple times again today when Nick Fury comes in and enters. You, you I don't know what side Nick Fury is on. I'm, I don't know if you got that one. I, I don't know if Nick Fury is coming in as the, as the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. or if he's coming in doing some different things. I'm not sure about that. But, you know, thinking about the whole superhero concept, there's a lot of similarities between superheroes and teachers. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I mean, here we are. We're doing some great things. We're very selfish. We always give of ourselves, sometimes a little bit too much, and we're always putting ourselves on the line for others. And, you know, and Dr. Well, I know this is a big topic, so I want to hit you with it on the front. Why? Why are teachers always out there constantly giving of themselves to others? And should we be thinking about ourselves more? We should. But I think the thing about educators, you know, like social workers, no one joins this profession to make money. You know, it's all about the type of impact that you can make in a child's life, the impact you can make in a community. And you know, the people in my family who have gone to college uh, are educators. And so I, this is the family business, I guess you could say. But we do that. You know, we, we love the children and we are dedicated to making that those 
that impact in children's lives. And, and I love it, you know, I, and I'm all for it, but I'm also for people being monetized and, and respected for the talents that they bring to the table, just like, you know, anyone else. Yeah, you, you've been talking a lot about this. We've had some good conversations about this. Now, you know, I, I, look, a, anybody that's looking to, to find out some more stuff about you, you know, you can go over to your website here, The Dr. Will Show. You've got a lot of great stuff out there that you give for free, but you're also of the opinion, and, and correct me here, that if a teacher's willing to put out stuff, they should have their hand out. Am I saying that right? What's What's the right philosophy here for teachers? Should we be giving everything away for free? I am of this philosophy on your website, right? Your, your site that you own, your, your domain, you give all you want away for free. That lesson plan, that curriculum, that tutorial, all of those things do feel free to give whatever you feel comfortable away for free. However, when we're talking about a for-profit company, particularly when that for-profit company approaches you, it is time to get a check. I, I, I see nothing wrong with someone approaching you to saying, hey, can you deliver this keynote? Can you do this project? Can you write this curriculum? And you get paid your worth. So really what you're talking about is the ability for a teacher to become not an entrepreneur, but an edupreneur. Of course, of course. And you're doing a lot of work around the topic of edupreneurs, aren't you? I am. Uh, that's been the focus of season four of my podcast. And it was the title. It, was, it is the title of the documentary that I have coming out. And and so tell us a little bit about this documentary. You've got a, a great product here. You've, uh, of course, teamed up with the fantastic Dr. Sarah Thomas. Talk to us a little bit about this documentary that's coming out. Who's in it? What's the topic? And uh, when can we expect to see it? Well, the whole idea literally came about because I, I interviewed, you know, Dr. Sarah on my podcast. And we talked about her experiences as an entrepreneur, you know, learning about, you know, taxes and contracts and all of those things. And then I told Sarah, you know, it'd be cool to write. You know, I love Edumatch. It'd be cool to write something for it, for it. But I just don't have a book in me. And that's when she said, you could do a documentary. And I said, what are you talking about? And she just said, hey, you're already doing these interviews. You could do these interviews and we could kind of put it together to create a single narrative. And I said, wow, that sounds awesome. Uh, so once uh, Sarah decided, hey, Will, uh, we're going to do this thing. I sat back and thought about what I was going to do. And quite honestly, the first thing that came to mind was about me doing something that related to educational technology. After all, this is what I do for a living. But then I thought about it. This is not what my heart says. My heart says I must do something on, on the entrepreneur. And that's what I sat down and kind of put together my a team, if you will, my Avengers, uh, going back to our earlier conversation on superheroes. And I just, who was my dream? You know, and I have Catelyn Tucker, Angela Myers, Eric Schinniger, Tom Murray, Dr. I, Dr. Robert Jackson. And of course, you know, we have Jeff Bradbury in. Uh, the documentary is slated to come out March 15th. You'll be able to download it from the Edge Matches uh, website. It seems like it's a great uh, group of people. And, and and again, you know, I'm excited to be a part of it. I had a chance to uh, check out the sneak peek of it a couple weeks ago. You did an, a, a fantastic job putting this thing together. Well, thank you. That was Sarah. Uh, we, we, we sat down and talked about the flow and how this thing was going to, to go. And, you know, that was all her, you know, getting in Final Cut Pro coming in and, and us kind of talking about, you know, how this thing was sort of look. And once she, you know, put, you know, showed me the rough cut, I said, oh, I do like this. And so uh, we talked about it some more via Voxer. And then on uh, we did a, uh, a Zoom and then we started 
communicating via Google Doc in terms of, okay, I want to see this. What do you think about that? Back and forth. And right now we're in the final stages of getting the whole piece put together. You know, I love the fact that this is not a one person job. I love the fact that this is collaboration at its finest. I also will tell you, I like the fact that you're using Final Cut Pro, which is my app of choice for anybody out there who's uh, looking to figure out how we do some of the video stuff around here. Now, look, you know, the reason why you're doing all this stuff is because you have a fabulous podcast called The Dr. Will Show. I got to ask you, how did The Dr. Will Show start? And uh, what is it all about these days? The show really came about from having a conversation with Eric uh, many, many years ago, I literally, you know, I, I started doing some consulting and I reached out to Eric, you know, he has been sort of my Yoda along the time, along these years. And I said, Yo, Eric, man, how can I get to where you are? And he said, "Will you need to create content. And he meant blogging, but I just can't sit down and blog on a regular basis. Like he does. He is a beast. And so I used to actually be a social media strategist for a career development company. And with that, a part of creating content for that company, I had this web show and I enjoyed it. So I said, well, why not just have a podcast? And I started my actual podcast with just video shows. And, I, and of course, they were the ed tech stuff. And eventually someone reached out to me on Twitter and said, well, I really listen to this stuff or have time while I'm doing laundry or I'm doing dishes, I'm cleaning the house. I don't have time to watch, you know, videos you have no audio. And that's when the idea came. Well, let me make this actual audio podcast. And for about a couple of years, I still did the ed tech stuff with sprinkles of personal development. And then I just got tired of it. Quite honestly, Jeff, I said, look, I'm done. Let me do the personal development stuff. Let me do the finances. And let me really talk to to educators about sort of owning their lives. And let's talk about uh, entrepreneurship. And that's certainly a topic that I like talking about here. And, you know, the whole idea of being able to create what you want, build that brand, have content coming out and really being able to, you know, focus your energies on what you want your future to be. That's all about being an entrepreneur. Of course, of course. I, I, I tell people, listen, whether you create that side hustle or not, and I truly believe in everyone creating multiple streams of income, but bottom line is your work should energize you every day. If you're not going to work energized and fulfilled and you just dread waking up in the morning, then you need to re-examine what you're doing and where you are. So whether you need to change grade levels, subject areas, positions, schools, or even lead the profession altogether. I want people who, teachers out there and people who listen to my podcast, I want them to be thrilled about the lives they lead every day. And so that's part of what I'm trying to accomplish with my podcast. Now, you said that Eric gave you the advice of just create content and, and that yeah. could be a blessing and that could be a curse. A lot of the time it's create focused content. So I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to throw the question around to you, Dr. Will here. Cause, yeah. cause you know, look, we're not calling you Will. We're not ca yeah. calling you Dr. Damport. We're calling you yeah. Dr. So you've created a brand for yourself. You've created a persona for yourself. You've created something that when you go out to ISTE and you go, have you seen Dr. Will, or as we called it last year, selfies with Dr. Will, yeah. people know who you are. So let me throw the question at you, my friend. How yeah. do you get to that level where people are recognizing you as the it of something? Well, you started the selfies with Dr. Will, Jeff. <laughs> uh, it literally, of course, you, you know, you, you want to create focused content, which is one of the reasons why when I made my switch, I was conscious of what I was, was doing, not only out of boredom, but to say, what can I do best and what can I do that is different from what other educator podcasts, podcasters are doing? You, in terms of the brand, the whole Dr. Will thing literally came about because I was working on my second uh, undergraduate degree and Dr. Phil was hot. I used to watch his shows and I remember telling my advisor, one day I'm going to get an EDD and I want to be called, you know, Dr. Will. And I also have a last name, which isn't Johnson. 
So, you know, people usually see my last name and, and they have, I've heard all kinds of iterations of my last name. So Dr. Will is something that anyone who speaks English can say. Uh, and so I said, well, let me go with the moniker of, of Dr. Will. And then I made sure on social media to make sure that I engaged people and that I shared resources. And, you know, I have been presenting at conferences and I've been doing the consulting. And as I have been creating this content, I've been making sure that to put the, you know, to actually use, you know, my name. And oddly enough, I spoke with, uh, you know, Jennifer Gonzalez. People know her as Cult of Pedagogy. Uh, well, she likes to say Cult of Pedagogy. Uh, I, I, I had a conversation with her because I was, I, after a while, I started thinking, should I change the name of my podcast? Because I'm wondering, you know, should my, why should my podcast be named after me? And she just flat out told me, you keep your name. Because a lot of people know cult of pedi- pedagogy, but they don't know sometimes that's her. And she said, keep your name, brand your name, because they know when they hear the Dr. Will show, they know it's Dr. Will. They know it's you. I and, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, even for the last seven or eight years, you know, we, we struggled here with. Like, right? Do you know Teacher Cast or do you know Jeff? And, and, you know, that, that's a big back and forth, right? Because if you look at it and, you know, like Jen and I have talked about this, like, are you Jennifer or are you cult of pedagogy? Are you Jeff or are you teacher cast? Are you Dr. Will or are you Dr. Will? (laughs) If you brand yourself, everybody knows who you are. And, And that's so important for anybody that's looking to create a show or to create a blog, get a website started, build that brand that you have. Now, why why podcasting for you and not blogging or other types of media? Because when I started doing research on how do you put yourself as a thought leader, how do you stand out in a specific field? Everyone, didn't matter what field they came from, spoke about how your content needs to be consistent and provide a certain type of value. And I knew there was no way in the world that I was going to consistently put out a blog post that people could expect to see every week or every two weeks that people could rely upon, that I could actually build that community from. The podcast, I knew that I could And also, when I tell people, when you're looking to create content, you need to find content that energizes you, that content that gnaws at you, that content that really excites you to the point to where those days where you kind of feel like I'm not quite in the mood, but you can get yourself there. Because as much as I love podcasting, it's still work. And so I knew that this would be my thing because I love connecting with people. So Dr. Will, you, you, you got the website, you got the podcast, you got the content flowing out about this. I got to tell you, you know, there's a lot of people that are out there listening that are kind of still on that fence. They want to learn how to podcast, not quite sure how to do it. Talk to us a little bit about what you're sitting around. What, what equipment do you use? How are you creating your show these days? What advice do you give anybody that's going to be sitting here going, should I try this podcasting thing in 2019? I'm very low tech, so I use Zoom. Uh, I pay a subscription fee every month, and that allows me to get a separate download of the audio and the video. Uh, I have a Blue Yeti microphone, and I also have a Blue Raspberry for when I am actually you know, out of my home and at a location to be able to podcast from an actual de- uh, mobile device, whether it's my phone or an iPad. I know a lot of podcasters like uh, Chappelle Billings. Uh, she actually uses Anchor, and she has has an awesome podcast. So uh, I, I think you have to determine, you know, your commitment level. Like, how much tech do you want to learn to use? Uh, how you know how much time do you have to edit your podcast? Like some people. We'll edit, you know, four hours, spend four hours editing one podcast. So if you don't have that sort of time <laughs> commitment, 
uh, to do that. So look at ways you can sort of scale it down. And I would also encourage people, your, your, your first time starting out podcasting, go ahead and get you the blue ice, you know, mic. Spend $50 on a microphone. Don't go, you know, spend $120 or more on a microphone and getting all this other equipment when you're first starting out because you could do that and do 30 episodes and be done. And now you're stuck with all of this equipment, microphones, mixers, all of this stuff, and you're not using it anymore. So, so true. So true, man. Because, it, you know, it, it, they usually say if you can get past 20 episodes, you're doing okay. Actually, most people say if you can get past eight episodes, then you're doing good, right? But they always say, like, the the average show on, on Apple Podcasts has less than 20 episodes because you get into it and you realize, okay, 20 episodes, if you did one a week, that's almost half a year. That's, you know, you're either going to be committed to this or you're not going to be committed to this. Yeah, I did 103 episodes last year. That's a lot. How'd you do it? I literally love it. I, I cannot lie. I love it. I get on Twitter. I get on LinkedIn. I find people that are awesome. And I ask. And then I ask people who are on the show, hey, do you know anyone that will be dope? to be on a podcast. So they make those recommendations, those introductions, and I get people on. And I'm not afraid to ask because the worst thing someone can say is no. And so when I reach out to the CEO of Hint Water and I say, hey, will you come on the show? I think you're dope. And she says, yes. I say, let's make this thing happen. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, yeah. we're, we're, we're friends here, but I got to ask, do you really tell the CEO of somebody, some big company that they're dope? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, that's my ask. My ask is always, I think you're dope. I would like to interview you on my podcast. That's what I do. I don't think I've ever used that pickup line, my friend. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, because that's what I, that's in the part of my intro of my show. Like, the, I think each week I interview someone who's dope. All right, I got I, I, I to ask. Dr. Will, you're married, right? I am. How, how did you propose? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say she was dope. Okay, uh, I just wanted to <laughs> No, I didn't say that. But. All right, I just I just wanted to to ask the question that I'm yeah, sure yeah. wasn't everybody's mind with that. I mean, look, if anybody out there is listening, uh, well, how can people find you these days? Where can they go to to, to connect with you? Twitter, uh, that's my main hub. I am uh, at I am Dr. Will on Twitter. You can of course find me on LinkedIn. You know, you know look up. Uh, just type in the import, and you'll find me. I mean, there's not that many on earth. So uh, you, you'll see Will DM where you'll find me. And, uh, you know, that's where we can connect. And I got to say, anybody out there that's looking to create a podcast this year, check out the Dr. Will Show. Great stuff. The guy does a hundred and some episodes every single year. He's cranking it out. He, he Can I say, are you dope? Is that the right? Am I using the word the right way here, man? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. I'm trying to be dope. He's uh, I'm trying. He's yeah. the only podcaster I know who's keeping it real day in and day out. And I can't recommend his show enough. Check out the Dr. Will show. And if you guys are looking to learn how to create a podcast, certainly want to recommend you guys going over to edupodcasting.com. That's edupodcasting.com. We've got some great stuff over there for you to learn how to get your apps, your websites, your product reviews, all the great stuff over at edupodcasting.com. Will, I'm going to give you the last floor here. Any advice to anybody out there who's like, all right, I got to start this thing. It's my time. I'm tired of seeing everybody else doing it. And I want to get paid from this. How do I start this thing? You got to start. I mean, that's the first thing is don't think about it anymore. You know, you got to be, you know, don't uh, speak about it, be about it. I mean, you literally have to just get it going. Figure out that one thing that you are so energized by. You are so passionate about it that you are going to be able to put out that content, whether it be a podcast you know, screencasts, whether it be tutorials, whether it be a blog post or vlogs, you got to find that thing that you are going to be able to speak about and with some sense of authority, because again, you're trying to brand yourself as a thought leader and do it to the point to where, because let's be real people. Once you start to gain traction and people come to you to write about it, to go present at conferences, to give keynotes and to speak about it, you could be talking about this same topic for a long time and you got to be able to love it because Angela Meyer has been doing you matter for a long time. 
And so you got to love it to do it. The website is the drwillshow.com. You can, of course, find him on Apple Podcasts, Simplecast, Facebook.com slash I am Dr. Will, and of course on Twitter at I am Dr. Will. My friend, Dr. Will, thank you so much for stopping by the show today. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. And of course, we want to say thank you guys out there for making TeacherCast your home for professional development. And we hope that you have a chance to check out our new channel, podcastingwithstudents.com, to learn how you can bring audio and video production into your classroom. That's podcastingwithstudents.com. Com. And of course, if you're a podcaster out there, we want to be featuring you on this show. Please check us out. You can find us on Twitter at educationalpodcasting.today. And of course, we want to say, you know, teachercast.net slash voicemail. Let us know your podcasting questions. We are here to support you. And until next time, guys, on behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students.